But when it comes to time blocking and you're saying life gets in the way and all these things that are more important, right? Number one, it's not a time blocking issue, okay? Right, it's a priority issue. shed some light into this circle prospecting mm -hmm. how do you go about finding these homeowners to call on to see you know whether they want to sell or move or down or whatever the case may be yeah absolutely you know here, here's the bottom line okay I don't care where you get your leads from okay I don't care what method you're using or what you think is the best or what kind of shiny penny that you see that might magically you know just blow your business up at the end of the day here's the bottom line how many people in the market know who you are right it's real simple okay so for me I think that I'm a strong believer in both digital and voice to voice okay I think the two work hand in hand but you got to have both I think too many people are leaning on digital whereas digital you know yeah you see some stuff you can watch videos you're missing that you're missing how the person reacts you're missing how the person actually conversates you're missing how quick and uh, professional someone is um, Johnny on the spot during the deal um, how to make the transaction go smooth what to do here, what to do there as far as experience goes. Yeah, anybody can get on social media and say, here's some houses, or here I am, I grew up in the area, you know, call me and all this stuff. But how are you actually going to handle the deal and how are you going to communicate? The way that you're going to set yourself apart is through verbal communication and effectively communicating who you are as a person, that you work hard, that you're dependable, that you're professional, that you're honest. And our number one job as a real estate agent, right, above everything else, right, we want to close deals, get listing appointments, do listings listings, show property, negotiate, all these things. But before any of that ever even has a chance to happen, we have to do one thing very, very well, and that is make people feel comfortable with us. If they don't feel comfortable with you, there's no way in the world they're going to do business with you. So we can just go ahead and skip and forget about all the other things that we wanted to do here with the listing appointment, the listing, the showings, the closings, and all that stuff. None of that's going to happen. And the more people that you can make feel comfortable with you, the more business you're going to do. It's really that simple. So for me, when it comes to circle prospecting, it's the quickest way to put yourself in the politician arena, right? I want to think of myself like a politician and I want to canvas the market. I want to let everyone know who I am, what I do, and that I'm here to help. Okay. And the more people that I can get the word out about who I am, what I do, and that I'm here to help, then the more successful I'm going to be. So I want two machines in place. I want a machine that's put me in front of as many property owners as possible on a one-on-one -on -one one basis to make that great first impression that they know that I'm here and I'm, I'm ready to help them, right? And then I want a bucket. I want another machine right here and a bucket that I can put those people in after I give them that great first impression to build my personal brand to where they never forget who I am after that great first impression. And at that point, it becomes a game of accumulating. I want to accumulate clients, right? I want to filter through the market. I want to find out who, who wants to work with me, who doesn't want to work with me. And I want to build my business on the people who do. And I want to have have something in place to build my brand so those people never forget who I am. So circle prospecting is literally picking out a subdivision that you want to sell in, right? You can get their you can get their phone numbers for two cents a piece. Oh no, he's talking about cold calling. You know, let's turn the let's turn the channel. You know, but here's the thing though: you pay for leads for a hundred dollars, fifty dollars, two hundred dollars for a random person in your market. You call them, they don't know who you are. We're right back to cold calling. You're just doing it for two hundred instead of two cents, and it's a random person versus a property owner. Guys, we have to run towards these situations that make us feel uncomfortable and we have to become numb to this uncomfortable feeling and we have to get to a place where we're having fun with this. Come on guys, this, this, this is people in your market, in your community and they need our help buying and selling properties. You know, why are we not reaching out to people who own the properties we wanna sell just to make friends? You don't have to try to sell them anything. Let's just make friends. Look man, when, when, a, when a buyer when a buyer or seller, when they, when they finish a, a, a transaction and you say, how'd you pick your real estate agent, right? The most common answer that I've found is I had a friend in the business, right? I had a friend in the business. So what does that tell me? What does that tell me? That tells me I need to make as many friends as humanly possible in my market. Ricky, someone like you, it's, it, you know, you're selling hundreds and hundreds of homes and 
I think that we all kind of suffer from the same thing. We start getting busy, right? Uh, and so how do you find the time to consistently separate some time to call? Well, you know, there's a couple of things I could touch on, okay? For one, I live by the three by three myself, right? Three hours, three days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, nine to 12, okay? I do three by three early in the week so that if I have to show property Tuesday morning, I can make one of those sessions up on Thursday or Friday if I have to. The reason I do it in the morning is because that's when my mind is the sharpest. And plus, I go ahead and knock out the worst task of the day and then the rest of the day is just gravy, right? So that's the way that I like to look at it on a schedule basis. But when it comes to time blocking and you're saying life gets in the way and all these things that are more important, right? It's number one, it's not a time blocking issue, okay? Because you're doing something between nine and 12, right? You're doing, you're, you're doing a good job time blocking because you're doing something between nine and 12, right? It's a priority issue because you're not prioritizing what needs to be done. Question for you, if you're showing property, okay? You're walking through houses, you're walking with the buyer, they're right there, they're talking to you, they're asking you stuff about the house, thinking about making an offer, whatever. Your phone starts vibrating in your pocket, okay? You don't know if it's a phone call, you don't know if it's a text message, you don't know if it's an email, but your buyer's standing right there. Are you even gonna reach in your pocket to grab your phone? Probably not. Probably not. Probably <laughs> you are not reaching in that pocket to grab that phone. All eyes are on your prospect, your client, your friend. This is now your friend. Okay. Your all eyes are on your friend and to help them. And they, they, they are basically the only person in the world to you at this point, whatever was happening in your pocket. Okay. Now let's say you spend another hour or two with that buyer and you don't even, can't even really get back to checking what that was on your phone for another hour or two. Right? So an hour or two goes by and you check your phone. And there's some stuff going on. You got text message, email, some phone calls, and you just return all that stuff and take care of it, right? Nothing weird happened because you waited two hours. So my question is, why can we, in our mind, uh, uh, give ourselves permission to, to totally ignore those distractions dur uh, during certain activities, but we don't give ourselves permission to ignore these, act these, these distractions during other activities? So what I want everyone to do is think about what I said really hard and pretend you have to get in the same mindset when you're making your calls as you do if you were showing property, okay? And that's that's what we need to do. You need to think, hey, I'm showing, you know, would I answer this if I was showing property? No, ignore your emails, ignore your text messages, ignore your social medias during the time that you are to make calls and check it after you get through making your calls, right? It's called discipline and it's called the mark of a champion. Love that, I love that. You know, besides cold calling as a pillar, how have you added and adapted to adding social media as another prospecting pillar? I mean, social media, I mean, come on, it's an ocean, right? I mean, it's it's an abyss. I mean, there's so many different angles you can use social media for. I mean, hey, DM every single person in your market and say, how are you doing, right? Start there. There's so many things you can do, you know, post every day, show people that you're active, have a great profile and a great bio, right? They need to know you're a real estate agent in your area. I see some real estate agents in their bio, I go to their bios and I don't, you can't even tell they're a real estate agent. You don't know where they're at. There's no way to contact them. And I know they're a real estate agent because they're asking me real estate questions. You know, that's one thing. Have a great bio and uh, and be active, right? Post every day and uh, reach out to people. DM people. DM every single person in your, you know, that follow you. DM everyone that's in the market. And if you want to run ads, here's my thing. You know, use social media as a platform ad-wise just to collect contact data, right? Because I do a weekly email, right? My email is a 90% organic reach, meaning 90% of the people on your list will see it in their inbox versus a two to three 4% organic reach on Facebook. Which which platform do you want to build your business on? Email, okay, that's where we want to build, that's, that's the foundation. We sprinkle social media on top. So use social media to extract contact information of everyone in your market through ads, right, to get them into your database. This big database I'm talking about that we need to build in 2021, use social media to help you build that database.